good afternoon to everybody i welcome all our viewers from both india and uh, sar countries for this national webinar series this is the webinar series initiated by our president dr bakul jain parik sir under presidential action plan of this year it's gaining a lot of uh, popularity during these lockdown times and today we have two sessions uh, 130 to 230 and 230 to 330 and regular four to five session so first session is by a very important talk uh, by one of our professor former professor at uh, pondicherry jipmer so he is going to talk on a uh, very interesting uh, cases which are uh, more common like uh, nutritional issues mimicking like uh, systemic disorders we are going to listen with him now for this i welcome our president dr bakul jain parik sir and also our honorary secretary general dr basavaraj sir so i request uh, our president dr bakul jain parik sir to give today's opening remark for the webinar series sir. and yeah, sir yeah. dr basavaraj yeah. will take thank you dr vinod and i welcome all the viewers for such a important webinar we have heard of importance given to nutrition nowadays and we also give lots of importance from illness to wellness but when you think about mimics we always think about mimics of infectious disease mimics of fever and mimics of inflammatory disease we know sita or geeta ram or shyam and rav and all those things but now we have sita and geeta in when you want to differentiate nutritional deficiencies which mimics like infectious disease so such a very interesting and a novel topic today and it will be delivered by none other than dr srinivas whom i rec uh, recognize as one of the great academician from pondicherry and the mayor and i'm sure everybody will gain benefit from his experience of treating such cases so over to basavaraj and then to dr srinivas so thank you very much bakul sir uh, today as the name suggest nutritional issues that is mimicking like a systemic illness this is a, something which is a very very interesting especially in the present era of an, a lot of nutritional issues is coming out post covid we expect a more problem of a nutritional issue to be there to deliver this we have a former professor and head of the department of one of the prestigious national institute of importance that is jipper pondicherry sir was a professor and head of the department there there and is known to the majority of the indian especially is a more popular among the post graduate for his clinical skills i am sure this presentation is going to benefit our all the viewers without hesitation this next one hour is going to be the very very interesting without taking much time we will hand over to teachers of teacher dr srinivasan sir to deliberate the session thank you so it is really very nice of you to call me to deliver an important topic which is very close to my heart because i had done my uh, three months course who course in national nutrition way back in 1979 and i have been very much interested in uh, nutritional problems in children and i have been looking after the kwasha karan marasmi cases as well as the nr nutrition rewards system jipma which was there initially of course gradually these cases have come down for sure and marasmus but again now of course sam has become very important topic but uh, what is important is uh, the other day dr elizabeth has been talking about type 1 and type 2 new gen disease and we had recently last december november a session in chennai on uh, nutrition and i gave this topic and uh, lecture and everybody appreciated and they wanted me to disseminate this information of micronutrient deficiencies prevalent among our children as well as adults because you know with more people taking food from outside and hardly cooking is done at home and everybody they go to the ready made hotels and then take junk foods and micronutrient deficiencies are such facing again in large numbers so we have to have uh, open eyes to open mind and open eyes and also open ears to listen to the history that it takes history to know that there is a possibility of micronutrient deficiency which can present as systemic illness as you will be seeing in the following case scenarios so with that uh, i think i have tried to go to my powerpoint will you permit me yes sure yeah 
So of course, all of you know what are micronutrients. I'm sure all of you are aware of it, and it's very vital in from fetal period. You know about folic acid, neural tube defects can occur, and iodine. You know, congenital cretinism can occur. So from fetal and throughout the postnatal life, throughout the adolescent period, as yesterday you heard from M K C Nair, for normal formation, maturation, development, and functions of various organ systems and the enzymes and hormones. in the body and also the immunological mechanisms they are largely dependent on these stress elements the role of zinc in biologic process for example it is involved in gene expression in cell development and maturation replication and largely now lot of studies are coming on its uh, importance in immune function and it's very important for growth and development as you'll see in the next case scenario so needed in small amounts less than 100 mg per day in microgram sometimes and milligrams only but they are very vital just because you know smaller things they are very crucial they are essential and also crucial in synthesis maturation activation as i already mentioned so energy production is dependent on you know thiamine's role in carbohydrate metabolism similarly in protein metabolism you know the importance of pyridoxin enzymes various metallo enzymes are there zinc itself is involved in the activation the of so many enzymes more than hundreds hormones iodine and chromium chromium is very important for the control of glucose in the blood growth regulator proteins they depend on these trace elements for its function reproductive organs are affected and also various other organs as you will be seeing from the case scenarios you know, we all know about the toxicity due to copper so it has been described as early as wilson in 1912 and as how as uh, interns as well as undergraduate have seen wilson disease that is due to excess copper accumulation we are all aware of it but we never knew about the deficiency status and see here it's 1912 he has found Wilson disease, and later he has found it is due to the copper deposition. And we all still remember this condition, which is very peculiar to Indian children, Indian infants and children six months to four years. All of them almost invariably died for lack of awareness at that time. But Wilson disease was known that time. So it was a progressive disease with abdominal distension, marked irritability. Irregular low-grade fever, hepatosplenomegaly, hepatic failure, marked ascites, jaundice. and very typically described as a big liver okay and uh, no various descriptions were there about the liver and almost all of them died within 5 years and it's very tragic it is a preventable disease now we hardly see them and i'm sure all of you would have seen indian cell cirrhosis during your undergraduate course sometimes in postgraduate course it is like a elephant being touched by seven blind people or nine blind people so though wilson disease was known copper was known and uh, here this condition they didn't understand because they didn't take a proper history dietetic history how the food is being prepared and cooked okay later it has been found see this is a remarkable article this uh, great tanner portman and mowat from uh, roger williams from this liver in, you know institute from london they came to pune and with anand pandit they did the study and on shilo shila bave they found that the copper massive deposits of arsenic staining copper is in the liver cells strangling the mitochondrial function and that is the cause of death and they have found the hepatic copper by staining and it has been see the strikingly high amount of dry tissue copper so this is akin to wilson disease but then the cause is totally different that was genetic here only certain population were is involved especially agarwal community and certain communities who are vegetarians and they were storing water in copper vessels later studies have been done in atomic absorption spectrophotometry which was done in uh, kota and they have found that the food items were containing so much of copper and copper absorption was more in these children and they got deposited not in the interstitial space but inside the cells compressing the mitochondrial function so this is uh, one thing and after that of course they have stopped storing water and preparing cooking in copper vessels 
and now we hardly see any case have any one of you seen cases recently i don't think you would have seen recently any case of indian sales growth so this is the importance of history taking that history taking and most important is how a food is prepared at home what is the vessel in which it is prepared the other day dr tangal was mentioning about lead poisoning so those days you know water was uh, from lead pipes so that is very important that how food is processed and cooked at home is very important and this has led to the disappearance of this particular condition from india and we don't see any deaths due to indian self cirrhosis so what is the objective so bring to limelight the problem of micronutrient deficiency state as a cause of certain disease condition which will present a systemic manifestations we making one particular system or multiple systems so what is prasad hastert syndrome this is a very important question asked of post graduates so dr prasad is an indian anand s prasad and he went to wayne state university and he was deputed by dr halstead to go and uh, work in egypt and he found these children one 20 year old man was looking like a 11 year old boy so short and stunted so he middle east he was working in along the nile river 1963 he went to iran and hypothetical assumption besides iron responsible for iron deficiency anemia these children had microcytic hypochromic anemia and they thought it was iron but then it was not iron then he thought it, there must be another factor which must be responsible and then he found that these experimental studies were already there so he thought there must be some other reason for this particular start so he found from the dietetic history again importance of dietetic history i am stressing here he tried to find out what is the eating habit and people were eating a pound of clay a day and had no cereal intake at all very very important the subsequent case scenarios also they were eating bread and clay and bread was clay was preventing the absorption of zinc in 1963 he was commissioned to establish university hospital in iran that's why he came from wayne university he observed a stunted 21 year old man who looked like a 10 year old boy other observed findings in this particular syndrome is severe growth retardation and severe microcytic hypochromic anemia and hypogonadism these people were having infantile type of testis and then lack of secondary sexual characteristics and of course this syndrome is called prasad halstead syndrome and later they found all, all along the nile river this particular thing was present found many other stunted adolescents with above features the syndrome proved to be widespread many died in teenage with pneumonia and parasitic infection like cystosomiasis so this particular thing he proved that it is due to zinc deficiency and he did a wonderful study in a large scale and then found that zinc was responsible and then it was curing all these children now they don't have this condition any longer there so this is another great man whom i met during my 3 months posting in national institute of nutrition in hyderabad so he had come there he was invited by dr gopal who is no more he has finished his 100 years and recently he died i thank that uh, he gave me an opportunity to come and uh, do 3 months there and uh, this great man had come in 1953 he discovered the connection between diabetes to type 2 diabetes and the growth tolerance factor and he found it is due to chromium before that of course one gg boy karim gg boy from bombay he went to canada and there was a old woman with diabetes who was having only one unit per kg requirement but she had some problem and she was unconscious she was on parental nutrition and then her uh, insulin requirement was increasing alarmingly to more than 4 units per kg to control diabetes then he found that uh, of course he was aware of this particular study and then chromium was given the iv fluids and then her diabetic control was established so this is very important chromium is niacin is very important for the function of insulin and this is one of the important landmark article and he was associate editor in american journal of clinical nutrition and recently positive in uh, 2007 now we will go to the case scenarios are you able to hear me so okay, clinical case scenario 9 month old child with a for bell seizures this particular child i went to dnb exam to delhi that time i went to see my senior resident who was doing dm neurology at that time and then he was uh, 
shyly telling that he missed the child had seven months a febrile seizures for a few minutes less than 10 minutes and they thought it was uh, febrile seizures and he was all right and subsequently at nine months he had a febrile seizures lasting for more than 10 minutes and that time they did calcium it was low and then they found that this child had vitamin d also being low and of course you see the x-ray so child had costochondral bleeding okay this x-ray has not come clear because i have taken it long back so this he was very shy and told please don't tell anybody that a great clinician missed his own child having his wife was all the time in the hospital he was working till nine o'clock in the night in uh, all india institute and he will come home later and hardly they were going out so they were in the quarters allotted to them and uh, child was never exposed to sunlight and uh, unfortunately this child a pediatrician child himself had records and conversion so what was initially febrile conversion later became a febrile seizure and they could find and start a treatment now he is in australia uh, in a particular university now the second case this is again by venkatesh my one of my senior resident now he is a professor associate professor in jipmer in pediatric department strider an active alert a febrile four month infant history of cough and noisy breathing for one day full term normal delivery no neonatal problems he was a febrile alert active and responsive interacting with his mother and the strider was mild and it was by basic in character of course dr tangwelu mentioned strider by basic it is below the glottis and barking cough only and crying so child was having mild wheez on auscultation otherwise there was no other finding no cyanosis respiratory rate was only 36 per minute heart rate was slightly high and spo2 was normal and the ronchi was mildly mild and intermittently heard so adrenal and salbutamol was given for this child and then while on treatment a brief episode of convulsions occurred for less than 2 minutes of all four limbs okay so this child also happened to be having low calcium and subsequently they found the vitamin level was low so very important my own uh, daughter's classmates many of them are working in uh, it companies and they are all all the time from morning to evening they are in air conditioned room and their vitamin level is very low so very important that a person who is all the time inside the house especially ladies nowadays their diet is also in, insufficient in vitamin d and most of them have very low vitamin d levels and their breast milk doesn't contain enough vitamin d and many of these children they present as congenital rickets and there have been enough case reports in the literature of congenital rickets presenting as neonatal hypocalcemia not responding to calcium administration and subsequently they find the vitamin d level being low so it's very important that we are of course now aware of uh, after dr balasubramanian's article and also there is a committee report on vitamin d deficiency in indian pediatrics so now everybody is aware and the vitamin d is being given regularly to all children but you must remember one of my uh, friend's child was being prescribed the uh, vitamin d right drops right from the beginning but for some reason constipation was there so they thought the parents grandparents thought it was due to vitamin d they stopped vitamin d subsequently the child had growth retardation milestone was retarded and uh, you know finally we found rickets in the x-ray so it's very important to find out similarly one gentleman came he is a business management from liverpool he had come to see his brother to pondicherry during christmas time and they went to velangani temple on the way i was working after retirement from jipper mahatma gandhi medical college they came and saw me to just say hello and the time it was winter no uh, december 25th so they came to the hospital to say hello and then they said uh, this boy was having recurrent wheez and then they showed me and uh, the boy was uh, just two and a half two and a half years and then uh, he was wearing because of winter no he was wearing jerkins etc nothing was seen and i was just uh, talking to them and i asked them that i said uh, there is nothing and chest is normal and all luckily the child said you know tata and raised the arms and the jerkins came down and i found widening of the wrist and then immediately i asked them to undress the child and found that uh, tibia there is a doubling of malleolus and his x-ray showed definite evidence of rickets and immediately the next day he was going back so he was given a high dose of uh, vitamin d then i told them 
that is one of my post graduate who is in uh, london so you can contact uh, contact him in case there is no response then you may have to investigate the child for for further uh, resistant request but luckily the child responded child is all right so it's very important whatever be the status and whatever be there so always think whenever a child is having wheeze stride or convulsion for no reason without family history think of a possibility of hypocalcemia and also subsequent uh, to vitamin d deficiency especially in the current scenario where most of them are working from inside the house not going out at all of course this is a memory test for many of you have seen this man recently giving a wonderful talk on various emergency case scenarios dr tangevelu from metro hospital so he has been kind enough to see that i am recruited as adjunct professor in metro hospital not because of that i am uh, showing him but you see the case which he had shown and i will try to see this he had shown in his case the child presented the acute myocarditis with severe cardiac failure with marked uh, respiratory distress fever seizures tachycardia respiratory distress and hepatomegaly so you know so this particular child and he has hidden this okay and later you can see there is evidence of rickets in the sorry can you see this okay there is evidence of rickets and then they proved the child is having cardiomegaly pulmonary pleura upper end of humerus was showing cupping fraying okay you can see that very well and also you can see the cupping and fraying of the glowing end of the bones okay so this child had echo features of cardiomyopathy no anatomical defect severe deficiency of vitamin d and low iron and calcium they were completely after vitamin d therapy and calcium therapy otherwise child would have been treated as myocarditis luckily they were able to find that particular point okay that is upper end of the humerus was seen in the chest x ray and subsequently they took this wrist x ray and then that led to the estimation of calcium and vitamin d because of seizures so this child is and then subsequently he i was going with him in his car to metro hospital that time he showed this case then i said can i use this for this particular this thing okay presentation and then he showed he gave me permission and uh, then i went and referred to literature there are so many cases reported in the literature more than 20 papers are there in vitamin d deficiency causing cardiomyopathy so the message is in any child presenting as myocarditis with sudden onset of cardiac failure kindly remember the possibility of vitamin d deficiency do calcium and vitamin d levels and then you can say the child is nothing wrong in uh, nothing wrong in giving also empirically vitamin d and of course subsequently you'll see i will recommend another vitamin to be given for any all case of myocarditis as the empirical treatment to save the child the child immediately responded okay so high prevalence of hepatic hypovitamin levels have been seen indian studies pregnant women it is up 42 to 74% naturally you can see their newborns will be also be having less amount of vitamin d they can present the newborn period itself lactating mothers it is 70 to 81% infants so this is indian data which is available in the literature so you know what is the manifestation so extra skeletal consequences you can see cardiovascular diseases cardiomyopathy diabetes can be aggravated and infections because it is involved important immunological mediation also and now people also reported increased tendency of cancer in these patients so prevention all of you know what is the amount of vitamin d i will not spend time on this it's there now i'll go to another uh, student of mine mbbs student who then later went to do md in chennai and then dm neurology in chandigarh so he has given permission This is a very important case. All of you have seen North India. It is not common in South. Okay, loss of occurred developed by stones in a one-year boy. Onset abnormal tremulous movements of limbs and face, neck following three days. Lot of people have written articles on infantile tremor syndrome. So dull, expressionless, plumpy child, but malnourished, weight less than three standard deviation, and microcephaly is present and forty-two uh, centimeters. So this child is. Uh, you can see the video. I'll just play the video. That see the hearing, bleating of a goat. Coffee here. Appreciate. Child is saying bleating.
so naturally people already know that the possibility of uh, megaloblastic anemia and uh, b12 deficiency has been incriminated and they have investigated this cell in sandiga and dimorphic anemia was present 7.2 and then low serum vitamin b12 less than 200 picograms per ml is considered to be abnormal folate was normal homocysteines were raised because of b12 deficiency and biotinase levels were normal in this child and mother's b12 is also low and child was given treatment accordingly daily im initially and subsequently in an addition of course other things are incriminated like zinc b6 and b1 so all these things are given addition and you will see the subsequent photographs now you see the same boy child so improvement seen within 72 hours after initiating uh, b12 treatment so oral supplementation was given after initial im for 7 days biochemical values which were all abnormal were uh, normal within 1 to 2 weeks so cerebral atrophy which was seen also reversed within a few months this is a case scenario of a child with b12 deficiency and uh, this is a pediatric endocrinologist i have seen during my post graduate days hyperpigmentation hypersegmented neutrophils and we thought of uh, b12 deficiency but we had to do bioassay bacterial bioassay to prove it and it's very cumbersome and sometimes contamination may occur so those days we had the child with uh, post column sensations and uh, we just empirically treated but this particular case scenario was very interesting because he has documented the posterior column involvement by mri scan usually this is in only in older people due to b12 deficiency and folic acid deficiency but it was seen in a child so i took permission from him and he was kind enough to give me this case this is a 12 year old girl recurrent loose stools for 11 years since her first year of age progressive poor school performance holistic performance stamping gait that itself suggests a posterior column sensation and side to side swaying for one week duration for which the child was taken and you can see the height and weight was below 3rd percentile pallor and nacre pigmentation very important point is many a child is having nacre pigmentation kindly immediately try to do b12 assay and glossitis was present higher functions are normal cranial was nerves were normal neurological signs there was evidence of bilateral extensor plantar response white based guide and sensory joint position sir impact so posterior spinal column was involved but touch and temperature sensations were normal and romberg sign was positive that's why the white base gaze and he was saying so he and then of course you can find the investigation so hyper segmented neutrophil with hemoglobin 7.7 and then if platelets are low macrocytosis hyper segmented polymorph these are we were treating those days b12 deficiency and of course here ldh was very high and then vitamin b12 was very low so less than 200 is abnormal and 60 picograms per normal and folic acid was normal and ph and other things were done so this is the case of and you can see the mr scan that is why i took it you can see typically axial sagittal t to w mr scan shows hyperintel signal the posterior aspect of the cord in the midline so this is one of the youngest child having tobacco combined degeneration due to vitamin b12 deficiency involved involving the posterior column is very well documented i thank dr rajesh for giving me permission to show this so please be aware that whenever a child comes with uh, posterior column sensation involvement think of either folic acid or b12 deficiency state. so this child also was given treatment with uh, tenofovirin 1000 mg daily for 2 weeks and after 10 months child has completely became normal and uh, ct mr scan also became normal so i will not go into it is uh, for the detail of this case now i'll go to the next case so this child is a 11 month old child failure to treat frequent episodes of infection referred to as leukemia anemia was present the reason for referring is anemia pancreatic anemia with hyperosinophilia 
and one episode of epistaxis. Naturally, whenever you have epistaxis, anemia, it pancytopenia, hepatosplenomaly, think of leukemia as a possibility. Market failure was present. Bony tenderness was not present. No bleeding tendencies. No lymphadenopathy. That was there were points against leukemia. Able to sit but could not stand and walk. Hepatosplenomaly was four centimeters, two centimeters is clean. Neurological examination showed hypotonia and decreased deep tendon reflexes. Again, you will find investigations. Pancytopenia was there. Okay, WBC was low, platelets was low and low normal. And then what is important is peripheral smear study. Importance of peripheral smear study. Hypersegmented neutrophils again. And elevated LDH. Mild thrombocytopenia was present. And of course, other things are present. You can see the MCV is increased. So megaloblast, this thing, megaloblastic anemia to some extent. Okay, in the, in the mild elevation. And hypersegmented neutrophil was present. So this is the bone marrow of this picture and referred as leukemia. So you find that bone marrow was done markedly hypercellular and myelar erythroid ratio is one to two. Increased erythroid precursors rather than neutrophilic precursors. And megaloblastic changes were present in this case and granular sites were decreased. Gene metamyelocytes were seen. So ematuration defect and you find B12 level is markedly low. Okay. High homocysteine and methyl malic acid levels were there. And mother's vitamin D level is also low, 110 picograms per ml. So it's very important. So whenever a child is having, also investigate the mother. Invariably, mother is also having B12 deficiency. Both must be treated. This is the most important message I want to convey. Both in B12 as well as in B12 deficiency, always think of mothers also and then investigate the mother also. So this child was uh, nutritional vitamin B12 deficiency. Child was given B12 in this following order, 500 micrograms for seven days. Then of course twice a week for one month and monthly. And the child responded. Outcome within four months, child became normal and neurological findings became normal. Seventh case, 14 month boy with failure to thrive and developmental regression. Increasing skin pigmentation referred as Adenoleukodystrophy, MRI brain was normal reassessment. Again, dietary history, vital flu. Child was a fussy eater, fed diet mostly of biscuits and diluted cow's milk. Weight was less than three standard deviation. Irritability was a very important feature. And severe acute malnutrition features were present. So Sam with, with no, he was considered and rapidly responded to treatment. So this is a case from MGMCRI, Mahatmagandhi, where I was working. So consider B12 deficiency in infants and children, pancytopenia, hepatosplenomaly, equivalent problastosis, and hyperpigmentation. This was handled and treated by Dr. Srinivasaragun and Dr. Dinesh Shekhar. And B12 deficiency, the child responded immediately and uh, the levels were low. So you can see B12 deficiency, how common it is. Now this is a Jipmer case. Seven-year-old boy from Kerala. He had come, he was working here, and uh, I mean, he was, uh, his father was working here. Sudden onset of external ophthalmoplegia. There was no other neurological findings. Dietetic history gave that he was only eating cassava and raw fish. It was common in some places they take raw fish. Fermented fish with polished rice is the only diet the child was receiving, the boy was receiving. And he total recovery after the appropriate treatment. It is well known that. B1 deficiency can cause dry beriberi and wet beriberi. This child had external ophthalmoplegia and red blood transketolized level is very important. Or, of course, if you don't have the facility, you can give high carbohydrate diet and find the elevation in the lactate. If you can do lactate. So that was the indirectness which was done during our time. This child, because of the typical history and the raw fish eating, anti thiamine enzyme is present in raw fish. This was later also found in clinical pediatrics in Thailand. Now, of course, you know about Wuhan experiment, a lot of raw things were taken. So, this is a very common culture in Thailand to take raw fish. But this was also seen in some uh, Kerala tribes. And this boy was in Pondicherry and he has been taking raw fish uh, from the net. So, this is the problem. And then he responded very well to the treatment with B1. Next case 
nine month old cell sudden onset of flaccid weakness of limbs with ptosis neck flop and inability to sit again dietary history proved vital in diagnosis shall save with total recovery so again another case of child with very very so this child also was having very dilute kanji and no vitamin drops are given or no uh, leaf vegetables are given so proper uh, child was getting only dilute milk and this child also immediately responded so it's worthwhile giving whenever a child is having neurological findings of acute onset like afternoon pg or sudden floppy neck etc or sudden placidity you can give time in and you may find dramatic response and it will be life saving so many times so this is the most important message i want to give next case is also as, as important as this so this is a 9 year old girl child breathing feeding difficulties chest in drawing vomiting lethargy decrease alertness and responsiveness there is no past significant past illness immunized as per schedule mother died soon after delivery again dietetic history diluted milk formula up to 5 months watery rice gruel diluted boiled cow's milk then on till hospital admission three episodes of diarrhea and three episodes of uri not needing admission so examination afable pale severe respiratory distress pulse rate 169 per minute feeble 70 by 30 mm mercury low centrally sinused spo2 83% in room air sinuses resolved after giving oxygen spo2 became 93 within 10 minutes it was in no child was uh, referred to piku and then they were about to do echo and uh, echo showed of course you find the st gala for present soft sound where they tender hypotomically 5 cm liver liver span 11 cm bilateral crackles was there the suggestion of myocarditis bedside echo market cardiomegaly poor myocardial contractility ejection fraction is only 40% and presumptive treatment was given diuretics iv thiamine was given and initially they were planning to give immunoglobulin etc subsequently of course seeing the response to thiamine then to 15 mg they given and the child within 1 hour showed remarkable improvement and these type of cases are being increasingly reported in karnataka just today i saw in the ifp morning karnataka uh, whatsapp that a child with pulmonary hypertension they respond to thiamine so many cases have been reported kindly people i am sure the dr basavaraj will be knowing that it has been posted by a few people dr girida giri and girish and uh, this thing ashok they said so many cases are there the first case of wet berry berry in children I have seen only in Karnataka being presented, and uh, they mentioned that such cases are increasingly reported. So the message is, whenever a child comes with either acute onset of paralysis, floppiness, etc., as uh, dry berry berry, or as wet berry berry presenting as myocarditis or cardiomyopathy, think of giving administering time and dramatic improvement. The lack of there is nothing wrong in giving empirical time and treatment. Child will not have any problems. okay this is the message after 6 hours following administration of two doses of thiamine child dramatically improved and ejection fraction became from 40% to 72% and after 16 hours a child improvement and came back normal ward and just discharge within a short period of time so i'll just skip this so high index of clinical suspicion is important so it's worthwhile giving for any child coming with acute onset of cardiac failure with sinus or without sinuses and also with acute neuro paralysis especially of cranial nerves or general floppiness think of administering thiamine so i will not go into the theoretical aspect of how to confirm it etc for want of time okay cardiac berry echo findings of course be exactly like dilated cardiomyopathy myocardial edema be present apart from lv systolic dysfunction so these are the various presentations is there uh, you can see in the literature okay so three types of infantile very very has been seen cardiac form aphonic form child may not have weak cry and may not have any voice at all pseudo magnetic form now case number 11 child abuse this child was uh, being looked after by some lady and she was supposed to be very strict with the child and a few instances occurred earlier 
and uh, she was not giving what was supposed to be given and this child had this type of lesions all over the body so this was finally turned out to be by x ray she was actually about to be arrested but then x ray showed the evidence of scurvy and then uh, history was there that she was not giving fruits etc though she was eating but she was not giving to the child so think of whenever you find bruises etc it may not be bacterial baby syndrome but it may be because of scurvy so this is a history brought with irregular difficulty in breathing to the creat came by the mother baby sitter of a sudden collapse out of long standing at the time out by the baby sitter multiple bruises were there like in if i dash on neck was seen okay so you have already seen the picture but child had evidence of weakness and child was given vitamin c child became all right now the 12th case this child has typical features of bleeding gums and also follicular hemorrhages this child case 13 osteopenia subtle periosteal reaction you can see and thin and then also periosteal hemorrhage is present so it was considered to be scurvy but child was on uh, necrotizing enterocolitis was there and perforation child was in parenteral fluids and all the features were fitting with vitamin c but vitamin c levels were normal but serum copper and celloplasmin was they were decreased vitamin several c levels were normal so it has found it is pseudo scurvy and copper deficiency can exactly mimic like vitamin c deficiency both skeletal changes as well as other changes will be very typical of scurvy so always take history of parental nutrition etc and think of copper as a possibility 14th case Two year old child had responsive watery diarrhea, skin rashes on both lower limbs. No history of fever, oral ulcers, drug intake. Development history was normal. Mild pallor was present. Skin there was net like pattern of erythematous to violaceous macule on both legs and buttocks, and you can see the rashes. So these are the type of rashes. So the initial diagnosis, uh, levio reticularis was made. Okay, all the investigations like A and E. phospholipid anti phospholipid antibodies vdrl site pyoglobulin is negative skin biopsy permission was not granted that tissue again is very important main staple diet of the child is after 6 months diluted cow's milk and the hardly any cereals are given that was the case of what pellagra this is an adolescent girl with similar history chronic diarrhea having rashes hyperpigmented patches okay 17 year old 12 months is a irritability generalized weakness loss of appetite progressive loss of weight 10 months progressive dark skin pigmentation over the face neck forearm that you have seen 8 months burning sensation in the mouth 2 weeks of disorientation decrease memory power so you know all the four days of uh, niacin deficiency 10 days loose stools which precipitated admission negative history seizures flushing skin rash so This, uh, she was not uh, erythropoietic for area etc but she was having no nail change etc but this is very typical of the history is very important so thin build poor in arish bmi is only 17.6 stable vitals dehydration was present pallor commissural keelitis glossitis etc and you know the typical red tongue angry tongue of near skin deficiency hyper pigmented skin lesions are present over the areas which you already seen and neurological examination showed dementic features disorientation poor memory no focal neurological deficit on examination so she was a pure vegetarian with maize roti a staple diet this is andhra girl who has a rice at some for neighbor to pondicherry so this is a case of pellagra and she responded to treatment very well and this is of course again mahatma gandhi medical college case by sino saragwan actually a post graduate undergraduate student diagnosis four days of cough cold fever abdominal pain treated as viral fever with gastritis a day later developed severe pain in legs over both cough muscles preventing him standing and walking developed shiny dry skin with no rashes or erythema immunobacteriological tests and other relevant tests were negative x ray of bones of the leg showed bony lesions the mystery was solved by an undergraduate student who took 
dietary history and medicines. It was a case of hypervitaminosis A. The child, the boy was getting repeated administration of vitamin A and uh, happened to be a hypervitaminosis A case. So always think of excess also, sometimes it happens. So environment ecology is very important for endemic goiter, fluorosis, as I mentioned, Sassad Halstead syndrome. Just like Wuhan has uh, brought the importance of China, Keshan disease was a known case of selenium deficiency cardiomyopathy. So always uh, take a ecological history apart from the dietetic history to find out trace element deficiency. Echo messages is micronutrient deficiency states exist among us. So take dietetic history meticulously. Any one of the micronutrient deficiency states can present with systemic features. Always consider nutritional factors as a cause of systemic disease. Just like we say, think of infective, inflammatory, congenital, immunological causes, etc. Always think of nutritional causes as one of the important conservation in the ideological factors in the differential diagnosis, then you will not miss. And take a dietetic history of both mother and child. And very important, you will never miss a case. And then we have methods of totally investigating these children. All facilities are now available in most of the government hospitals also. So we should not miss a treatable condition and lose a child like myocarditis or a child presenting with uh, neuroparalysis, etc. So take home messages from my talk is ask and listen to mother and caregiver. That history of mother and child is very important. Right from the time she conceived and even earlier and subsequently after birth till the child is coming with problem. Ecological and environmental history I already mentioned of its importance. Cooking and storing methods as I told in childhood cirrhosis etc. Any cultural food facts, peculiar practices, history of pica, special abnormal craving, excessive consumption of one particular thing etc. is very important. Okay, I think uh, So, kindly remember micronutrient deficiency as an important possibility in any case we are dealing with in the general rounds. Any one of the micronutrient deficiencies can present with this thing. So, consider nutritional factors. So, I already mentioned this particular slide. With this, I end my talk. So, now. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Can stop sharing, sir. Yeah. So was I, I was fast. Yes, sir. But you have covered many cases, uh, very interesting cases. Yeah. Sir. Because yeah. the time is now, the next speaker yes. will be waiting. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, you have uh, spoken uh, on uh, various aspects of dietary involvement in uh, various systemic illness. We can uh, we make like uh, very systemic illnesses yes. like neurology, cardiology, and other things. Okay, sir. So, and uh, what is your uh, important message for this one as undergraduate, as postgraduates? They again, you want to insist in our actually in that dietary history is most important one. Yeah, in Mumbai, uh, Pedikan, I was asked to talk on uh, left, you uh, know, left is left out. Okay, so in the left and the K sheet, you know, dietary history, developmental history, and arithmetic uh, details will be written. So that is the talk I gave for the PG session in the missing. Then subsequently, I was uh, no, asked three medical colleges in Pondicherry, randomly yes, case sheets to be taken and analyzed. I found uh, no dietetic history is not properly filled. And uh, we have seen many times developmental history is not properly written. So it's very important we identify and we give stress in the rounds. It's very important. A trainer should make the person to present the case thoroughly and check whether these details, immunization history, dietetic history, and both mother and child, especially the child is having a problem. If proper history is taken, the way the food is prepared and given in what type of form, dilute form, etc. All this is very important. And in every case we are dealing in the bedside round, we should always ask what are the etiological factors. So start from developmental, congenital, genetic, then subsequently nutritional, endocrinal, 
okay psychosomatic factors all these things are very important okay then of course infective inflammatory if the fever is there so all these things are very important so it's very important that culture should be there okay during the training period where nutrition is always given importance as one of the possible etiological factors and totally treatable factor that is the only message i want yes so there is one question regarding you have shown yes. I, i think uh, case number 8 or 9 where uh, vitamin c level was normal but copper and selenium was uh, less so yeah yeah that is a child of, yeah yeah that's a child uh, this thing uh, okay one of my friends case who has been there in australia he shared the yes. case with me so the child was uh, this thing uh, necrotizing enterocolitis child was on iv fluids but the clinical features were uh, presenting like uh, scurvy the x ray showed like that but the child was having normal levels so the child was not responding to vitamin c and then uh, they found the copper level was low so this is very important you can uh, see in the books very exact uh, typical bony features will be present in uh, and they will also have hypochromic microcytic anemia where they will respond only after this thing or sometimes they may have fibroblast also is there any way to diagnose uh, these pseudo survey like copper deficiency on x ray because we will not be able to do investigation no, no, in unless, every case no no of course you can uh, find out you give give vitamin c and then if the child doesn't respond it's worthwhile giving copper oh. so nowadays of course uh, copper is of course we know about wilson this is you know chelating agents okay yes, but we don't know the importance sometimes you know because uh, zinc is given more nowadays lot of people are giving if zinc is given more the copper intake will be less okay oh. so that is how we treat uh, wilson's disease so it's very important with the more uh, this thing and fruits are not given okay and then uh, copper you know is not uh, so important that's what they think so very you must always think whenever child is having uh, vitamin c features or uh, osteoporosis of the bone do a peripheral smear hypochromic microcytic anemia then you find occasion sideroblast think of copper deficiency yes sir and then what will giving copper as a treatment so what do you find now the difference so you are there for a long time as a teacher so what was there in 70s and now it is 2020 did you see any no, we have, in, uh, no actually thing? i have seen no we have considered the nutritional deficiency some of these deficiencies but unfortunately we didn't have the you know investigative mechanism for vitamin d estimation etc we are only going by uh, uh, no other clinical features as well as uh, radiological features lecture and uh, bio assays were uh, difficult for b12 and folic acid deficiency and hypersegmented neutrophils if it is then macrocytes we see immediately we start treatment that is how we have been doing but nowadays we can do document everything and as i showed in that uh, bombay case by rajesh who had given me subacute cumbin degeneration i thought it's only you know folic acid b12 deficiency in adults but i never knew it could occur in children though we had seen in adult medicine but not in pediatrics so that was the first case i have seen well documented case so he was very kind to give me the case to be shown to you all so, so there is one more question which you initially only told that don't ask about covid so there is first question saying role yeah. of zinc vitamin c and vitamin d in covid 19 prevention and treatment Yeah, all these things are important. Yeah, yes. be at least during this time be a vegetarian, okay, and yes. take lot of vitamin C and other uh, vitamins in moderate amounts, not in excess. Okay, right. I'm sure if you this thing, you know, be protective with gear when you're going out and uh, maintain the distance, the discipline, and also take uh, in that and vitamin C and uh, some of these. Uh, i have done a talk on immunomodulators natural immunomodulators in bangalore pediatric society in uh, uh, medical college long back i have talked about turmeric ginger and uh, etc so i think we must understand the importance of these uh, natural food items of course we must not uh, do in excess but it should be helpful in uh, trying to prevent these children you know children yeah, establishing the disease see virus can attack us but all virus will not cause disease because we have some local immune power and we can boost it by natural immunomodulators which are available in our uh, hindu culture or uh, any culture in our eating habits etc so i think uh, vitamins in moderate amounts will uh, definitely be helpful especially vitamin c vitamin d etc
I haven't done any study on that, but everybody is stressing on that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm called as turmeric powder doctor because cough syrup I stopped giving long back. I tell them, you are already given so many cough syrup before you come to Jipma. Why you want to waste money? You take tulsi leaves, boil it, and then put some turmeric powder. Or if you get a pure honey, which will not cause botulism, so you are very assured of good honey. You give honey and ginger, which child will become all right. I used to say. They used to call me turmeric doctor. <laughs> okay, sir. okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for sparing your you valuable so time. Okay, sir. So it's a pleasure that you all invited me and yes, given sir. me an opportunity. So thank yeah. you very much. I okay. hope uh, uh, the people are benefiting. Sure. Yeah. for our wonderful presentation of 14 cases on nutritional deficiency which will mimic like other systemic illnesses thank, thank you, you. And and also those people have given me the cases to be shown to you people their experience thank you thank you sir thank you thank you i request our viewers to join for our next session and thank you there okay. thank you the zoom uh, our lady also has helped me in uh, yes sir diap team is thank really you. doing good work sir thank you sir thank, thank you, you. Dr. Vinod, I'm ending this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you want can to hear something it. about the next webinar, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.